Hi Brad from WordPressSites.net uh, This tutorial I'll show you how to install WordPress manually using cPanel uh, and we'll use File Manager which is a tool within cPanel so if for some reason you, you don't have access to Fantastico or Simple Scripts which are normal uh, tools that come with uh, the latest uh, WordPress web hosts then you'll need to install WordPress manually and if you're not comfortable using FTP and you prefer to use File Manager uh, within cPanel then this tutorial is for you so obviously the first thing you need to do is you need a web host and you need a web server with uh, cPanel uh, this tutorial assumes you've already created a database and there's uh, a tutorial on my website uh, including a video on how to create a database and we'll be installing WordPress into a into a subdomain uh, however you can use this tutorial to install WordPress manually um, into the root directory in your public HTML root directory or into a sub uh, subdomain or a subdirectory doesn't really matter uh, let's get started now so you'll need uh, you'll need uh, access to cPanel and uh, with file manager so let's just log into file manager first, first of all let's let's download WordPress so we'll go to uh, the WordPress website wordpress.org And this is where you'll find the download of WordPress. Now there's two versions. You can download the zip file, which you'd use if you were installing WordPress manually with FTP. But in this case, we're using File Manager within cPanel, so we want the tar version, the, the .tar.gz version. So we'll click on this, and we'll save this file to the desktop and I've already done this before so we'll click yes and we'll download WordPress to our local computer once you've downloaded the tar file to your local computer it's now time to log into cPanel and you should uh, have access to cPanel if you just signed up for web hosting uh, in your welcome email they'll send you a URL uh, with a link to uh, to cPanel and also with your login details. So uh, scroll down once you log into cPanel and under the file section here you'll find file manager. So click on file manager and what we need to do now is upload that uh, WordPress um, file onto our server. So what we'll do here is We'll upload it to the public HTML root directory first, so we'll click on upload and we'll locate the file and it'll be on the desktop. Here it is here, WordPress 3.2.1 tar. Click on that. Click on yes and that'll start uploading to the public HTML root directory. Now that the upload's complete, let's just click the back button and we'll go back to File Manager. Now we'll refresh File Manager and we'll see the WordPress tar file. Here it is here. It's in the public HTML root directory. So what we need to do now is extract these files into another directory. So we'll highlight this, we'll click extract, and we'll just create a directory called uh, WordPress. Well, let's call it demo, just in case. So this will extract all the WordPress files, and here they are here, it's already done that. So that was pretty quick. So we click close. And we'll just refresh this. And here we are with the demo. So we can see it here on the left hand side. And the WordPress is inside there. 
So let's just open this up. And these are all the files we want. We don't we don't want uh, we don't want to copy these files inside the folder. We we just want the files. We don't want the folder itself. So what we do is we we've opened up WordPress. Now we'll just highlight these. And these are all the WordPress files that we need. Now we need to copy these over to the subdomain. I've already uh, set up a subdomain. Uh, if you're just installing WordPress into public HTML, then you'd copy them to the public HTML. So we're not going to move the files, we're just going to copy them. And which address are we going to copy them to? We're going to copy them to the blog. I created a directory called blog. Uh, if, if, if you just set up a web host and you don't have other sites in, in, on the server or, or any other directories, uh, then you can simply copy these files directly into your public HTML uh, root directory. So I'm copying them to blog, which is blog dot. Um, a test domain that I'm using. So there they are, there they've copied. Now let's just go back to home, click on HTML, and it should be inside here. So here they are, here. So all the, all the WordPress files have just been copied over into the uh, blog directory, which is a subdomain I've set up for. Uh, for another domain, another domain that already has an existing WordPress installation. And it's called solutionsocial.com, it's one of my test domains. So the address for this WordPress installation will be blog.solutionsocial.com. Now next step, we need to find the WP config file. Now I've already set up a database and I've written several tutorials and, and made videos about how to set up a database and I've ta taken note of the, um, the the database details, the database name, username and password and we'll need to put these in now. So we find wp-config-sample.php file, we right click on it, click code edit, edit And here we are here, we need to edit these details, the DB name, the DB user and the DB password. I've just put in the, uh, these details from the new database I've just created in, uh, in cPanel. I've got time to show you how I did the database, so when you're in cPanel, come down to the database section, uh, click on the MySQL database wizard, and we'll just quickly set up a database, uh, call this demo one next step demo one password a b c one two three great user and that's that's all you need to do set up a new database. Now we'll just take note of these details here. I'll put these in the notepad because we have to enter these into the WP config sample file. Just before we go here, click all privileges and uh, next step just to finish off this database. Okay, that's all done. Turn on. Now let's go back to uh, the WP config sample PHP file and I've already opened that up so we just enter those database details in. and uh, the database name is actually on Ostra2 demo1 and the username was exactly the same just make sure you don't have any gaps in here otherwise this can cause, uh, cause a problem in the password is ABC123 Let's just quick save changes. 
close this up. Now we'll just refresh this, but we need to rename this file as well because otherwise it won't connect to the files. So this has we have to delete the sample part from here. So click on code edit. And that's not what we have to do. Just click on rename, sorry. And we'll just delete the uh, sample part. So it'll be w wpconfig.php. Click rename. Okay, that's all set. Now the next step is to run the installation script. Okay, now to run the installation script to get WordPress up and running, uh, we need to type in the address, which is uh, blog solutionsocial.com in your case it will be your domain uh, forward slash wp admin forward slash install.php now this should run the installation script here we are here so it's connected to uh, the database and connected to WordPress, so this has all gone smoothly. So just put uh, just put a site title in here, whatever you want to call your site. Uh, with the username, I, I suggest you use a username which is at least 10 digits long. It's a lot better for security. It'll make it very, very difficult, pretty much impossible for hackers to hack in if you've got a username which is more than 10 digits. And you've also got a password that's uh, more than 10 digits. In this case, I'm just uh, I'm just using this for, for demonstration purposes, so I don't have to worry. And just putting an email address in there. Allow my site to uh, appear in search engines like Google. Of course, you want that done. So, uh, well in most cases, anyway. Click install WordPress. Login. And here we are in the back end of WordPress. So I'll just give you a few little tips if you're new to WordPress and you, 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 you don't really know much about WordPress. Just come down here on the far left and down the very bottom settings. The, the, the first thing you want to do is click on permalinks. And the, these will determine the structure of all your different unique links for each uh, individual page and post and category and tag and so on. And, uh, and I advise you to use uh, something other than the default. This is the default here, and it's not very search engine friendly. So you can use any of these. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, I use category post name, um, but it really doesn't make a lot of difference. I, I, I suggest you use category post name if, if you're going to manage your categories quickly, or if you want a simpler structure which is very search engine friendly. Uh, to use the post name tags here. So these will be created when you click on these, and you can just leave post name there if you wanted to use post name. Click on save changes. So this will mean you've got nice, pretty, they call pretty links or pretty URLs. So all the uh, all the unique permalinks for each page and post will be uh, search engine friendly and your readers will be able to follow them as well. So there we have the uh, the permalink structure has been updated and the internet connection has dropped out for a minute. But, uh, now let's go have a look at the front of the site. So here we have a brand brand new fresh installation of WordPress. I've installed it to blog.solutionsocial.com, but you can install it anywhere you like. You can, you can install it in a subdirectory, you can install it in your, your public HTML root directory, and uh, good luck with installing WordPress. Cheers. If you want any more information on how to install WordPress or you get stuck at any stage, I've written several tutorials on how to install WordPress manually and I'm also writing a tutorial which will complement this video on how to install WordPress using File Manager and cPanel. So that should be finished within the next few hours. Cheers and good luck with WordPress.